Today, Philosophy Insights did some special editing of Jordan Peterson's lecture, and I hope you enjoy the content. And maybe this is most evident in the European economic community. To bring all of that multiplicity under the what would you call it, under the umbrella of a single unity is to simultaneously erect a system where the top is so far from the bottom that the bottom has no connection to the top you know, you, your, your, your social systems have to be large enough so they protect you but small enough so that you have a place in them and it seems to me perhaps that's what's happened in, in places like the EEC is that the distance between the typical citizen and the bureaucracy that runs the entire structure has got so great that it's an element of destabilization in and of itself and so people revert back to say nationalistic identities because it's something that they can relate to it, there's, a, there's a history there and a shared identity, a genuine identity gen, an, an identity of language and tradition that's not an artificial imposition from the top, an artificial abstract imposition. In, in the Egyptian creation myth, the version I'm familiar, most familiar with, in, in the previous creation myth, an older one, the Mesopotamian creation myth, mostly what you see menacing humanity is Tiamat. She's the dragon of chaos, and so that's nature. It's really, it's really mother nature red in tooth and claw but by the time the Egyptians come along it isn't only nature that threatens humanity it's the social structure itself and so the Egyptians had two deities that represented the social structure and one was Osiris who was like the spirit of the father he was a great hero who established Egypt but became old and and willfully blind and 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 uh, and senile and he had an evil brother named Seth and Seth was always conspiring to overthrow him and because Osiris ignored him long enough Seth did overthrow him chopped him into pieces and distributed him all around the kingdom and his son Horus had to come back and fight Osiris's son Horus had to come back and defeat Seth to take the kingdom back that's how that story ends. But the Egyptians seem to have realized, maybe because they had become bureaucratized to quite a substantial degree, that it wasn't only nature that threatened humankind, it was also the proclivity of human organizations to become too large, too unwieldy, too deceitful, and too willfully blind, and therefore liable to collapse. And again, I see echoes of that in this story of the Tower of Babel. So, it's a calling for a kind of humility of social engineering. One of the other things I've learned as a social scientist, and I've been warned about this by, I would say, great social scientists, that you want to be very careful about doing large-scale experimentation with large-scale systems. Because the probability that if you implement a scheme in a large-scale social system that that scheme will have the result you intended is negligible what will happen will be something that you don't intend and even worse something that works at counter purposes to your original intent and so and that, that makes sense because if you have a very very complex system and you perturb it the probability that you can predict the consequence of the perturbation is extraordinarily low obviously if a system works though you, you think you understand it because it works and so you think it's simpler than it actually is and so then you think that your model of it is correct and then you think that your manipulation of the model which produces the outcome you model will be the outcome that's actually produced in the world and that doesn't work at all I thought about that an awful lot thinking about how to remediate social systems because obviously they need careful attention and adjustment and it struck me that the proper strategy for implementing social change is to stay within your domain of competence and that requires humility 
which is a, a virtue that is never promoted in modern culture, I would say. It's, it's a virtue that you can hardly even talk about. But humility means you're probably not as smart as you think you are, and you should be careful. And so then the question might be, well, okay, you should be careful, but perhaps you still want to do good, or you, you want to make some positive changes. How can you be careful and do good? And then I would say, well, you try not to step outside of the boundaries of your competence, and you start small, and you start with things that you actually could adjust, that you actually do understand, that you actually could fix. I, I mentioned to you at one point that one of the things Carl Jung said was that modern men don't see God because they don't look low enough. It's a very interesting phrase, and one of the things that I've been promoting, I suppose, online is the idea that you should restrict your attempts to fix things to what's at hand. So there's probably things about you that you could fix, right? Things that you know that aren't right. Not anyone else's opinion, your own opinion, that aren't right. You can fix them. Maybe there's some things that you could adjust in your family. Although that gets hard. You have to have your act together a lot before you can start to adjust your family. Because things can kick back on you really hard. And you think, well, it's hard to put yourself together. It's really hard to put your family together. Why the hell do you think you can put the world together? Right? Because obviously the world is more complicated than you and your family. And so if, you, if you're stymied in your attempts even to set your own house in order, which of course you are, then you would think that what that would do would be to make you very, very leery about announcing your broad-scale plans for social revolution. <laughs> well, it's a peculiar thing because that isn't how it works, because people are much more likely to announce their plans for broad-scale social revolution than they are to try to set themselves straight or to set their family straight. And I think the reason for that is that as soon as they try to set themselves straight or their families, the system immediately kicks back at them. Right? Instantly. Whereas if they announce their plans for large-scale social revolution, the lag between the announcement and the kickback <laughs> is so long that they don't recognize that there's any error there. And so, you know, you can get away with being wrong if, if, if nothing falls on you for a while. And so, and it's also an incitement to hubris because you can announce your, your plans for large-scale social revolution and stand back and you don't get hit by lightning and you think, well, I might be right, even though you're not. You're seriously not right. I might be right, and then you think, well, how wonderful is that? Especially if you could do it without any real effort. And I really do think, fundamentally, I believe, that that's what universities teach students now. That's what they teach them to do. I, re I really believe that. And I think it's absolutely appalling. And I think it's horribly dangerous. Because it's not that easy to fix things. Especially if you don't... Well, especially if you're not committed to it. And I think you know if you're committed, because what you try to do is you try to straighten out your own life first. And that's enough. Like, there's a, I think it's a statement in the New Testament that it's... I think it's in the New Testament that it's more difficult to rule yourself than to rule a city. And that's not a metaphor. It's like all of you who've made announcements to yourself about changing your diet and going to the gym every January know perfectly well how difficult it is to regulate your own impulses and to bring yourself under the control of some, what would you say, well-structured and ethical, attentive structure of values. It's extraordinarily difficult, and so people don't do it, and they, instead they wander off, and I think they create towers of Babel, and the story indicates, well, those things collapse under their own weight, and everyone goes their own direction.